All right. Trying to get the, there we go. Uh-oh. Oh, well, here we go. What are um, express registration pages? We use these a lot to create a one-stop shop type thing. So they allow you to create a, a registration form which collects the personal data, course fees. You can do workshops and take payments, um, either credit cards or an invoice or both. Um, and so what we like to use it for is we set up just on our website, uh, on the course page, a registration button, and it goes directly to the um, express registration page. But if also, if you're doing a specialized conference for a group, you can um, provide a link just to that group. So um, the only drawback to the express registration page is that you can only register for one course at a time. So it's a single use. So if somebody wants to add to the cart, um, this isn't the avenue to take. You would use the normal registration process. This. Um, and um, so that's the only drawback that we found um, with it. The cost is built in to what you're already paying for your ACE web package. Um, we have reached out to ACE web a couple times for some custom programming. Um, but uh, if you, it's really not that hard once you learn how to do it to um, set up these. A lot of times I'll set up, I have like several different little sets and I'll just pull one up and uh, copy it and kind of update it for the next one. So it's not like you're having to recreate the wheel every single time. And when we do the express pages, um, we don't usually do a login or account creation. Um, we use them for um, paid courses, free courses. We do some that have workshops. We set up ones for international programs. We also have set up exhibitor and vendor forms. Um, we do our um, summer camp registrations. And then we also use them for outside clients. So we do contract um, with clients outside of our internal office. So you might ask, how do you get an express registration form? You just simply download it from the um, ACEWEB customer resource page or ask your technician for a copy. There are two types, the HTML or HTM um, page, which um, is the one we use most of the time, and then also the script-based templates. And I'll talk about each type of page for you. Um, I don't, uh, if you need help with this part, um, your technician would be able to help you, but you put the, uh, template page, um, under the, um, ACE custom folder. And now we have, um, different, uh, alternate interfaces that we use. And so where you may have ACE as the main one, um, I might also have OLLI or GEDI. And so if you're doing a cust uh, an express page, you have to make sure you put it in the right alternate interface. They don't all pull from just the main one. I normally name all of my um, uh, express registration pages, our course ID number. So for example, the one you see here is C230124. So that tells us um, it's year 2301 is the month and 24 is the date. So that's just how we identify our courses. And so I match up the um, course ID number is the same as the express registration title page. We have used a, a generic page um, uh, called like tax registration if we're trying to apply it to several courses. Um, but I've only done that once or twice. They're really simple to use. Um, one other um, small thing is that it's not um, interacting directly with student managers, so it's kind of a static page. So anything that you put on the page that might need to be updated, um, you have to go in and update that page. Everything's hard-coded. You can change and have a different logo at the top, and that's especially why we like it um, when we're doing it for clients. Um, we can make 
make it look different than the normal template that wraps AceWeb. Um, so um, one thing that um, I always have to stress to people in the office is when we set up these um, uh, express registration pages in student manager under the fee tabs, the fees are ordered. So you see the early registration fee one, student fee two. So when you build out the um, express registration page, um, the fees have to be in the exact same order. So um, uh, it, if they don't match up, if your fee one in student manager is early registration fee, but your fee one on your express page is your student fee, then it it when you go to your payment gateway, it's just going to straight look at fee one and pull that fee. So it's, that's one thing that's really important is to always make sure the fees line up. And so with these pages, so if we have the early fee as an example here, um, when it rolls off, I have to make sure I set uh, a reminder on my calendar to go in and update the express page so that the fees still will line up with um, student manager. So I try to encourage people to get their clients to not have the fees roll off over the weekend because I don't like to work over the weekend. Um, this is just the default page that you download from um, the Aceware website that um, is an example that you can build off of where it collects name um, information. Uh, it has an option for interest codes. Um, the select size thing there, I think, is for T-shirt. You can ask questions about vegetarian meal. So here's an example of a very basic form that, that we use, where we're simply capturing um, name, firm, address information. Um, if you'll notice that uh, we have just about everything asterisked on there because uh, we want it to be required. And so um, uh, to force them to answer the questions. Um, the only thing that's different on this one is we ask a question at the end, are you a graduate of Auburn University? And um, so this is about as simple as it gets, I guess. Uh, this is an example of a client registration form. The logo at the top's changed. Um, and uh, this one, they asked for us to include cancellation information and then also a coupon code. Um, and if you have multiple fees, then on the drop down, it'll show the different fees. Uh, this one is a webinar we do once a month that we started during the COVID. We're still doing them. Uh, it's a free webinar we do each month. And, um, and so instead of click here or click to make payment, um, I use uh, click here to finalize registration. We tell them there's no fee, that they're securing a seat in the class. So I try to be clear and direct with everything. Okay, so um, for workshops, we have one particular client who likes to set everything up in workshops. So we, um, and the, uh, Student manager, it shows the workshop codes. And so you use those codes to connect the workshops on the express page. And they just uh, use the drop down, select the workshop they want, and uh, make the payment. And you can still utilize the functionality in workshops of requiring a certain number of workshops and then a max if you want. But we don't usually use that feature very much, but if you do use it and they don't meet that parameter, they'll be prompted at registration before making payment to um, select more than one workshop if needed. Oh, so uh, we do um, handle a few international um, program registrations during the year. And one thing I learned really quick about the international registrations is uh, someone who lives abroad, they don't have a zip code. So I created this format here um, 
to, to be more in line of having two address lines and then a postal code and a country. And then the phone information um, uh, is a country code. And so uh, the other aspect I learned about doing these express registration pages is, is normally on our, um, we use Bluefin as our um, credit card um, provider, Bluefin Pay Connects. And so um, normally we ask for the zip code, like when they're in that, that environment. And, but we have to actually take off the zip code question in PayConnex so that it will process the credit card. I don't know if um, anyone else has ever ran into that, but um, we suspend asking for zip code um, when we're taking international payments. Uh, this is an example of on that same um, international registration where they wanted to add a companion fee as an optional fee. And so that's what you see here. And then we asked for the name of the companion. They had uh, several items they wanted to, to highlight under registration fee options to make it clear to the person about when the fees changed and what the fees included. And then they also on this one had an optional workshop that a person could attend. We have a global community day festival that we started last year and we have a what we call the vendor registration. So we would collect the company information, the booth representative. We had forms that um, the vendors had to um, supply and questions to answer to be an AU vendor. And then also they had optional items for ever, uh, ads in the magazine that they could select. So this one really had a lot of different um, items on it. All right. We don't do this very often, but sometimes we'll have someone who wants to offer an invoicing option as well as credit card payment. So um, this is how I have set it up before where um, you give the option um, for both. Um, and so you have either um, credit card payment or pay at the door for the invoicing is the terminology we used on this one. And um, it, you just have to go through the normal invoicing routine and student manager if, if they select the invoice. Um, I mentioned before we use some alternate interfaces. Um, we do, do have a contract with the Alabama Department of Labor. They have their own look and feel that they like. Um, something that's interesting about theirs is the way it's set up is because all of the text information is actually just pulling directly from um, student manager. Uh, this is one of the WCS pages um, and it's the, the catalog description. So all that text information before where the personal information fields are is actually pulling directly out of student manager. And then they just have a simple registration information that they select. Um, and like the one I just showed you is one of the script pages. So the nice thing about those is it allows, if you want a login capability on that one I showed you, it did not. Um, it, um, I'm about to show you one we use for summer camps, um, uh, and it will pull in, if you change a fee in student manager, it will automatically update your fee on the, um, WCS page. So on the WCS pages, um, on the ACE web tab under the information page, I, you need to put in the name of the, um, uh, express page with the WCS at the end. So this past summer, we decided to step away from the HTM, the express pages and go with using the WCS pages for our summer camps 
because we wanted to give the parents the opportunity to be able to log in to an account that they know they have and make um, payments if they're on, on a payment plan um, for a summer camp. So uh, we had it so that immediately when they went to register, they were prompted to either log in or create an account. And this is, is pretty long on the screen. So it took up to, uh, so for the summer camp, if you already had an account and you logged in, um, it would automatically pull in some information directly from the student manager. So the information you see filled in is information that when I logged in, it automatically saw me and pulled it in. And then all of the other information, date of birth, grade and fall, gender, t-shirt size, all of this was customized. Um, and it's generally the same format for each summer camp, but sometimes we would um, have different information like uh, different uh, grades in the fall or something. And then where you see where it has camper agreements, um, they could hover over any of the um, releases or procedures and see the agreement. And then they have to agree to it before they can move forward with registration. And they had, um, they could pay a deposit and instead of paying the whole registration fee, they had optional fees they could select from and they even had a camper code, a discount code, the coupon code they could use. So I was pretty happy with how this turned out last summer, and I believe we plan to move forward with using it again. We are using it again for this summer. So I had mentioned before too that um, we like to make fields required. And so if I had simply selected make credit card payment and the fields aren't filled in, then the end user is prompted um, that this field is required. And so you can't move forward to making that credit card payment until um, you fill in all of the required fields. So just a short recap, using the um, HTML pages, they're um, quick and easy. You don't have to set up account creation. It's easy for the end user. It's a faster, registration process and that it's just one click and you're done. I kind of reuse them. You can personalize and customize and you can use them for both, both free and fee-based. The only thing that's a drawback um, about that type of page too is you end up with duplicate name records. So someone in the office has to go in and um, make sure that uh, uh, Mary Smith who may have taken the Eagle Cast webinar five times, she'll, she'll be in there five times. So you have to go in and um, combine the records. Once you figure out the coding, it's not that hard. And, and then just having to make those fee changes um, when the fees roll off. Um, the WCS pages are nice because you can have that option for the account login. Um, there's no duplicate name record. It's a dynamic environment in that if you change something in Student Manager, it'll automatically change it on that registration page. And the templates wrapped in the whole ACE web look like normal, like you normally see on the ACE website. Okay, that's it for me. Let's see what we have in chat. Very good. I just sent out a prompt for questions and okay. so, um, but mainly, Karen, this is probably for your customers or clients that, uh, number one, may not want their users to log in, like a guest right. registration, because they're just coming in, the institution wants or something, and they don't want to have to create an account, or two, you want a direct registration for a single course, mm -hmm. come in, get their data, get their information, get their payment, and out without using a shopping cart. So benefits of express registration there. Others that I missed, Karen, that um, drives you to make the decision on whether to put on a regular ACE web registration versus express? Oh, that that is most definitely the strongest reason, even with the um, having the duplicate registration records is they want it simple and easy, you know, just bam, they're done one stop. So mm -hmm. very good recap. That, that and rebranding 
be able yes, to, yeah. to to uh, showcase another customer, you know, run a course for another customer or a conference and and have their branding on just that page. Right. Very good point. We don't need a whole yes. alternate interface for one customer, no. for one program, but the program, they don't want to use Auburn's branding perhaps, and they want their own on there. Good point. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Very good. Other questions from the groups? Uh, there, somebody, so you can have a regular ACE web registration page as well as Express Rage. You use them concurrently, correct? Yes. Yes. And then your URL, uh, Maxi, would, that you use would drive straight to that page when you're registered now, it would go straight to that Express registration page. Right. And, and that's what we do. We, we put the direct link to the registration page off of our um, conference or summer camp page, um, and it goes directly there. So you don't see like the whole course group listing or anything. It just takes you directly to that one page. Mm -hmm. Now, Matthew, we have um, a quick pick a few quick pick users on today. Um, what about quick pick? You can use that concurrently with regular ACE web, yes? Right. Um, now, so quick pick, the difference would be it's it's uh, multiple. Multiple courses. Uh, you're, mm -hmm. you're registering in multiple things on one page, not just one course at a time. Um, but I, I do kind of want to backtrack is Maxi asking if you can have the regular registration flow for the same course as as an express registration? No, I didn't interpret that that way, but Maxi, you can clear okay. up for that. If you're wanting, you wouldn't want express reg and yeah, she's exploring options. Okay. Yep. Yep. Very good question. Okay. Right. That that's good. That's a good point, Matthew. Right. No, you can't register within regular ACE web and express registration. It's either or. But you Correct. can have some courses on regular ACE web and then some on express. And Same thing with quick pick. Yeah. You, right. Yeah. Quick pick can um it, it, it I not really take the place of regular registration, but it's just kind of it's meant for, you know, those those, you know, people that are coming in and just I want to register in these five different things and be done with it right quick and not have to go back, add course to cart, blah, 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 go find the next course and add to cart and, you know. That works, that yeah, Quick Pick works really well for those of you that have courses that are in high demand, but they have limited registration capability. I think of Black Friday where they're standing at the door waiting for <laughs> the doors to open, but they're waiting with their mouse just ready to click on the things they want, pay and get out. Um, that's where Quick Pick comes in really, really handy for multiple course options. Express Reg is more of a single course client based. Mm -hmm one and done or I, we want guest registration option or our own branding. Good question.